Imagine you buy a brand new or used iMac, you set up the computer, you download the applications you want, you use the computer for a few months, later decide on starting a side hustle doing wedding photography, and then the people who like your wedding photography now ask you to make wedding videos. So you buy the video editing software, you start editing videos, only to find out that you maxed out the 256 gigabyte hard drive that's in your computer. So naturally you go on Apple's website only to see that they charge an arm and a leg to get more storage on their new computers and you feel stuck. Now, once this happens, there's typically two options that come to mind. The first is you can go buy an external hard drive and just you know quickly copy your data over or the other is gonna to attempt to upgrade the hard drive in your computer yourself and potentially risk breaking your display. Now, as much as I wish we could upgrade the hard drives in these kind of like you do on a PC, Apple has made it unfortunately harder and harder over the years. Originally, you could go get one of these computers, you could take the display off, replace the hard drive without too much issue, but now it requires you to disassemble the whole computer or the hard drive is soldered on there altogether. And this can be very frustrating for us who need more storage and we don't wanna spend a ton of money. But don't worry though, I'm gonna show you how I go about getting more storage for your iMac without potentially breaking your computer and saving you some money along the way. Now, the first thing we need to go do is get an external hard drive. And with this, you mainly have two options. The first is you can go create your own external hard drive, buying your own hard drive, your own enclosure, or what's probably more simpler for a lot of you watching, is just buy an external SSD off of Amazon. Now with this, I try to be really specific on what you get. I try to get like a Samsung or a Crucial or a SanDisk hard drive, just because I know those are typically the most reliable and you want the read speed to be at least a thousand millibits per second. Another thing you notice too is Mac OS can be very picky with what hard drives will actually work for installing an operating system on. So I tried four hard drives and out of the four hard drives I tried, only two of them worked. So you definitely need to be very careful there. And if you don't know what's the right hard drive to get, I will link some down in the description from what me and a few other YouTubers use but that is something that is kind of frustrating. You aren't gonna be able to use a cheap hard drive with this. So definitely be careful there. If you are somebody who is trying to save money, one option you could consider too is getting an open box version on one of these nicer hard drives. Sometimes you can get like a 30% discount, which really helps. Now, once your hard drive comes in, you wanna plug it into one of these ports that has an oval shape and a lightning bolt above it. If your computer doesn't have it, don't worry, you can still plug it in one of the regular USB-C ports or the USB port. But the reason why I recommend this port specifically with the lightning bolt above it is that is a Thunderbolt port and typically if those, so you can get the highest transfer speeds. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be installing macOS on our external hard drive and booting off of it. This does seem kind of complicated, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it. And this is what I've been doing personally for the past three years of my laptop just because I cannot afford the insane prices Apple charges for storage on a college student income. But anyways, for formatting the hard drive, when you plug it into your computer, it's gonna give you a little pop-up saying it needs to be initialized. Um, you can either click initialize or you can go to this application called Disk Utility. And once you're in Disk Utility, you wanna click this little arrow to expand it to show all hard drives. You wanna click your external hard drive. It should be under external. And then you wanna go click erase. Now, when you're erasing it, it's gonna ask for a name. And what you wanna name it is something that's different from what your internal hard drive is named. And that's not one of these terms I listed up on screen. I have noticed if you put one of those names down, sometimes it'll air out when updating and get confused what hard drive it's trying to update from. And then for format, you wanna select APFS and then GUID partition map. Once that's erased, we can move on to installing macOS. And for this, you wanna to go to the URL down below or just the URL up on screen. And you wanna download the version of macOS that your Mac is currently running. So if you don't know this, you can go up to the top left of your computer, click the Apple logo, and then about this Mac, and it'll tell you what version your Mac is running. So if it says macOS Ventura, you wanna download macOS Ventura. If it says macOS Monterey, you wanna download macOS Monterey, et cetera. When the installer is done downloading, it'll open up and then you just click continue, agree to the terms, and then it'll ask you to select a hard drive. Now you may have to click show all disks, but your external hard drive should pop up and then you can click install. And then typically I'd say installing time, it typically takes about an hour, but after that your computer will restart and it'll show a setup screen. When you get to the setup screen, you have two options. You can either set up as a new computer or transfer data. If you want to transfer data, just continue signing it up, kind of like you would set up a new Mac or a new iPhone. And eventually you'll get to a screen that says migration assistant. 
From here, you want to select from a Mac, Time Machine Backup, or Startup Disk, and then click Continue. Then you want to select your internal hard drive. So select your internal hard drive, select all the data you want to copy over, uh, click Continue, and it will transfer your data over. I'd say typically, depending on how much data you have, it can take anywhere from half an hour to, I'd say like three to six hours to transfer data. So this might be something you want to do overnight if you plan on using your computer the next morning or don't have much time to wait. But once your data is transferred, it will restart the computer again and it'll get to another setup screen. And from here, it'll ask you to sign in for your Apple ID and configure your Touch ID if your computer has Touch ID. After that, it'll go boot up to your home screen and all your data should be transferred, except for weirdly enough, your wallpaper. I don't know why, but for some reason, when you do a data transfer on Mac, it doesn't transfer over your wallpaper and it sets it to the default one. So if you're wondering why your wallpaper is different, that's why. Now, moving on to some tips for how to use your external hard drive. I'm gonna first start off with how you can boot into a different hard drive. And for this, there's two ways you can do it. The first is you can go to settings, then general, and then startup disk. And from here, you can change the selected disk you wanna boot into. Or if you have an Intel iMac, you can plug in a wired keyboard, hold down the option key, press the power button, and restart the computer holding down the option key. And then we'll get a list of all the hard drives you can boot into. And if you're using an Apple Silicon Mac, you can just hold down on the power button until it says startup options. And they'll show you all the different hard drives you can boot into. As for ejecting the hard drive, there's two ways you can do this as well. You can either boot into your internal hard drive and then right click on your external one and click eject. Or you can just shut down the computer and unplug the hard drive. As for updating the hard drive, there's nothing different you do here. You just update like you typically would on an internal hard drive. And then one last thing too that's really cool with external hard drives is you can use them between different computers. However, both computers may be using the same type of chip technology. So if you have an Intel iMac and an Intel MacBook, you can use the hard drive between those. But if you have an Intel iMac and an Apple Silicon MacBook, unfortunately out of luck there, you can't use this hard drive between the two. And then one other thing too is both computers need to be able to go up to the operating system your external hard drive is running. So for example, if your external hard drive is running macOS Sonoma and your iMac can only go up to macOS Monterey, which is a few years old, unfortunately, it's not gonna be able to boot off of that external hard drive. But anyways, this is really, really nice because let's say you are using your desktop computer and you're about to go on a trip, well, you can eject the hard drive and plug it into your laptop and then all your data should be there. You may have to sign up your Apple ID again, but if you're only using this occasionally between different computers, it's honestly not that big of a deal. Now, I hope this video helped you guys out saving some money for your Mac storage. And if you want other tech videos too that help you save money, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other videos. But anyways, thank you all for watching and goodbye.